Hello, my name is Scott Schuster, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Marine Corps, retired. I served 20 years in the infantry and I've got three combat tours. The first one was in Desert Shield and Desert Storm in the deserts of Saudi Arabia, just south of Kuwait. My last combat tour was in Iraq in a place called Al Qaim on the Euphrates River at the Syrian border. When I grew up, I thought Memorial Day was the first day of summer, the day the beaches open. After my service, Memorial Day has a completely different meaning for me. Memorial Day is the day that I take some time to remember the men that I served with who gave their lives to protect and provide for my way of life and the way I prefer to live and for my family. What I'd like to share with you today is uh, that last combat tour, some of that experience, the nine men that were lost serving us and part of the reason why I have that little ritual. Um, the 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines was my command uh, in the uh, Euphrates River Valley. We had a 4,200 square kilometer area of operations, 120,000 civilians, 22 different tribal groups that we had to work with. My men were responsible for providing security and counterinsurgency operations. When we came home after that tour, we had a battalion memorial service where we invited all of the uh, family members who had lost Marines and sailors with our battalion. Uh, that ceremony is somber. Um, it has some common elements in all different organizations and units in the military. In our particular case, uh, we decided to have a battalion formation. We had a bagpiper playing Amazing Grace during the ceremony. And we remembered each one of our Marines and sailors that day. And after the ceremony, we had, uh, we had those Marines and sailors meet with the family members, have a picnic and get to know each other. So that those husbands and mothers and daughters and sons and fathers could learn about their sailor and Marine who had died from the people that served with them. I'd like to share with you today um, the remarks I read at that mem memorial service um, has meaning for me, uh, and I hope it does for you. Thank you for joining us today to honor the sacrifice of your sons, brothers, husbands, and fathers. The men that we remember today answered the nation's call in a time of war and uncertainty. They willingly shouldered a burden that others in our society did not have the fortitude or the conviction to carry. They were remarkable in their willingness to accept that burden so that others could live their lives in freedom and liberty. With the exception of Master Sergeant McNulty, they all entered service after September 11th, 2001. They knew to a man that they would be sent in harm's way. They understood the importance of their service to our nation, their families, and to each other. Together, they represent a cross-section of America with diverse interests, views, and aspirations. They embraced life and shared the common bond of the warrior, a fierce love for their fellow man. They risked their lives every day for the Marine or sailor to their left and right, and tragically, had those lives cut short before they could fulfill their tremendous promise. We deployed to the al Qaim region of the Euphrates River Valley, where we saw democracy, freedom, and liberty take root. Due to the sacrifices of these men and the men of this battalion, the people of al Qaim now enjoy greater freedom and determination in their local government. Their security forces have, are exercising independent security operations, and the people of Al Qaim have responded to this blossoming of freedom in a growth in economic activity and expansion of construction. People from all over Al Anbar and Iraq recognize the success of Al Qaim and move their families to the area to join in reaping the rewards of our service. All of these things are indications of security and stability 
that holds great promise for the future. The lives of our fallen brothers made a difference to those whom they touched and have left a lasting legacy for those that follow. Nothing we say or do here today will diminish the pain of their passing, but we can be comforted by the thought that they died doing their duty, committed to their fellow Marines and sailors, while demonstrating courage and resolve in the face of adversity and danger. They will live on in our hearts and our memories as men of dedication and honor. They're heroes who will be sorely missed. The nine men that my battalion left in Iraq were Sergeant Justin Walsh. He was an explosive ordnance disposal technician. He died while defusing an explosive device. HN hospitalman Charles Sayre, Doc Sayre, India Company. He was wounded by an IED while he was on foot patrol in one of the villages. Master Sergeant Brian McNulty, he was in weapons company. He died from wounds sustained in a helicopter crash on a night raid we were going after insurgents. HN hospitalman Kyle Nolan, Doc Nolan, Lima Company. He was wounded by an IED while in a mounted patrol. His armored Humvee was hit and he died of his wounds. Lance Corporal Ryan Burgess, Lance Corporal Mahan, and Lance Corporal Fernando Tamayo were in the same vehicle with Doc Nolan. All four of them died in that blast. The tragedy of that one, which made it even worse, was their platoon had to put a security perimeter around that vehicle for four hours. They had a 40 millimeter grenade launcher and the ammunition was cooking off. It wasn't safe to retrieve their bodies. Lance Corporal Adam Emuel, Indy Company. He was wounded by an explosive device while on foot patrol. And finally, Lance Corporal Brian Escalante. Brian was with Weapons Company. His vehicle was hit by an IED. The explosive was right underneath his seat. He died instantly. The other Marines in his vehicle were wounded, but they all survived. Those are the men I remember on Memorial Day.